So the question that next comes up is that how do we manage this unexpected loss and how do we manage uh, the expected losses and how does these two things they work out for me right so over here if you think about it so your expected losses are your average losses or these are the losses that you get to the right so these losses are not of very high magnitude they are of very small magnitude but they need to, they, they need to be managed like Generally, let's say a credit card portfolio has a typical loss rate of uh, 3 to 4 percent or uh, max 3 to 4 percent, right? So, <coughs> out of the total amount of loans which has been given, like nearly on the whole, you know, if it's a very well managed portfolio, your portfolio losses can go up to 2 percent as well, right? Now, what matters is that relative to the overall size of the portfolio, it becomes a bit difficult for us. Because uh, you know, uh, because it comes to number of actual defaults that happen, that is high because these, well, these portfolios have very large number of accounts. Right? Now, on the other hand, uh, now for a commercial portfolio, like two percent loss means that let's say there are thousand, uh, hundred borrowers, so out of them, just two go to default, but the exposure associated with them is very large. So. So most of the risk management strategies that we have or the BAU strategies that we generally take up are determined or are driven towards or are directed towards either minimizing that expected loss that, uh, that, that is actually occurring or you know instead of controlling that expected loss at some given levels. So, so that's uh, the basic idea behind all the BAU strategies and all these things. But the question that comes out is that what is it that covers up this expected loss? So what is it that the bank needs to decide to cover this expected loss? So that part is your provisions, right? The provisions for bad debts that you generally keep and the change in provisions that you measure, right? And that is precisely guided by a separate set of guidelines, which is your IFRS 9, right? So over here, we will not be talking much about IFRS 9. We'll be touching on some aspects, right? Because that's a separately uh, that's a separate discipline altogether. Over here, we will talk about uh, more on. So we'll talk about expected losses. We'll talk about the, the models which are used to uh, develop to capture these expected losses and all. So the question that comes out first is. What covers the expected losses? It's provisions, right? And the change in provisions rather. Now the question is, why do we need to account for these expected losses? And why is it that we do not use only provisions to capture the unexpected losses as well? That's because uh, because these provisions for bad debts that we are talking about is treated in the PNL statement of a bank, right? Now, when they are treated in the PNL statement of a bank, the changes in provision when it's treated in the PNL of the statement of the bank, right? So it's an expenditure for the bank. Now, if it's an expenditure for the bank, that needs to be recovered. So these are adjusted into pricing. So when a particular product is priced, when uh, you know when they are when they are uh, kind of uh, what should I say? So so when they are kind of process or you know when they are kind of uh, when the pricing is done, right? So these are adjusted into that. Now, why not unexpected losses be put to uh, these provisions or uh, to these these products? Because if I have to use a provision to capture my unexpected losses as well, the price of my products would shoot up at a very high level. Therefore, I cannot capture the unexpected losses using provisions. And I need to have a separate set of methodologies, a separate set of guidelines to reserve for capital. So this is where, you know, this entire story comes in. So expected losses are generally maintained by the impairment pro impairments and provisions and unexpected losses are maintained to, or are captured through, uh, through the capital of the bank. So that's where 
you know, we need to bring you know, we need to understand these two concepts. So basically, again, <clears throat> so what comes next is that how do we identify or define expected losses? How do we define unexpected losses? So that's the next part that we will be talking about. Because when we try to define unexpected losses, that's you, that that is what would justify our requirements of the, or you know, that would justify our uh, models uh, going forward, right? Hey, Tanmay. Yeah, what's that? Nothing uh, from my side. Think, do you mind clarifying uh, why the unexpected loss would be covered by provisions? Yeah, so basically what happens is, uh, you know, uh, when we, uh, so, <clears throat> so when we have these impairments kept aside, right, the, the, the provision for impairments, right, now these provisions or these expected credit losses, which we are, uh, the, the amount that we are keeping aside against the expected credit losses, so these are mostly PNL by statement, uh, PNL components, right, so they need to be, so that's an expenditure for the bank because the bank is not lending that money, but it's, it's keeping that aside. Now, now what would happen is that I would actually introduce it into my pricing, right? Because I need to cover that uh, expense that I am bearing. So the question that comes out is that if I do that, if I'm doing this, then what is it that or, 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 or how is it? that this thing would look like or so so basically what would happen uh, Umesh, is that that if i introduce so what what i generally do is i use this expected loss to i uh, in my pricing right so i cover i try to cover that part up. now this expected loss is a lower amount because so the, it's it's an average loss which represents the overall portfolio losses so where i know that the portfolio losses are pretty uh, consonant to a lower end value. So therefore, the expected losses are not of very high magnitude and you can cover them through your pricing. But if you want to cover your unexpected losses as well, right, your unexpected losses have a very low probability of occurrence, but they can be of very high magnitude. Now, if I want to absorb that into my pricing as well, the price of my banking product would shoot up, right, to any high levels where the demand for it would fall to zero. Right or or it, it demand for that product would fall very largely. So therefore, what we do is so therefore only provisions of the expected losses are captured through pricing or are made up through pricing, whereas the bank keeps aside aside the capital to take care of the unexpected losses. Hence, we have these two set of uh, requirements. One is your provisioning set of guidelines, and the other is your capital guidelines. Because when you are keeping aside provisions, right, your provisions are driven more by your business conditions, by the business portfolio behavior as at the time when you are keeping aside the provisions, right? Hence, it's very, it's a very point in time approach. But when you are keeping aside your capital, right, when you are keeping aside your, uh, you know, capital to uh, capture your unexpected losses or to cover your unexpected losses, you cannot change your capital every now and then, right? So that's why capital management or uh, these capital modeling are through the cycle kind of an approach where you look over a whole cycle of data, right? With the largest span of data and you try to identify, okay, is this data set that I'm looking through is a proper data set? So, so is this data set representing my losses? And based on this data set, if I compute an estimate of probability of default loss given default etc i would be able to reach a figure right or our rwa figure finally which would give me a very conservative reading of what it actually is so that's the way we need to look into it right so therefore because now unexpected losses right are very huge in amount right and hence i cannot risk kind of you know changing them every time with uh, putting in capital removing capital and so on i need to guard it with a core capital of my bank or the more with the purest form of capital of my bank and which is my tier one capital 
my tier one capital is nothing but my equity right now i may raise an equity and i may raise i may plan to propose to expand my business right and i can bring in an ipo right and through that i can raise capital from the market now the question that comes out is i cannot do an ipo every week right so so when so the capital that i want to keep aside for my bank should be an actual or it should be the purest form of capital which can absorb those unexpected losses now the problem with provisions is that that you know in provisions provisions are estimated figures right now there may be estimation errors up and down and they may change based with the behavior of the system behavior of the portfolio and so on so so when an unexpected loss strikes and let's say that last period it was a good period and suddenly a discrete change has happened right the uh, so then what would happen is that i would suddenly fall short of my capital because i have under provisioned it but this time it's like a sudden shock which has happened and i cannot keep aside i don't have that amount of money and i collapse right so i need to ensure that the, the, the capital that i would use for unexpected loss is a pure capital right yeah so i'll just come down to that so how is it that we i can compute this capital how is it that expected losses are computed i'll come down to that so but before that what i want to understand is that is this idea clear to us yeah tanmay can you please explain unexpected loss once again yeah so basically for now just have the understanding that unexpected loss is a loss which as you can understand from the name which we do not expect to happen right so it is nothing but is the variance from the expected losses now now from a more uh, conceptual understanding unexpected losses are losses which have very low chances of occurring right but when they do occur the impact that they have on the banks or the exposure that these things have is huge right let's say and this is where you know so so when i talk about unexpected losses i don't find a better example than the global financial crisis right though it was not kind of unexpected unexpected because there was a whole set of uh, policy makers there was a whole set of economists who had predicted that such a thing is going to happen but the point was that with the market was growing no one uh, kind of thought of uh you know no one kind of thought of uh, putting this uh, putting it over there uh, like paying heed to that advice so this is where uh, this entire question comes up okay right so i'll talk about the global financial crisis and that's where i'll be linking up this concept of unexpected loss and expected losses right and how is it and, and why is it that after this crisis all these regulations and these uh stress testing regulations came in why is it that the impact on basel or the uh, stress on basel regulations had increased so much after this so so that's what i'm going to kind of talk about in the next discussion right so over here before i move on let's try to pass up and understand what's an expected loss so i say that an expected loss is nothing but an expected loss is an average loss right why so let's look into this uh, frequency table that we had constructed right now if i were to define uh, kind of define an average to this series how would i have done it so the first thing that comes out over here is this so over here the x bar that i have so what is x bar or mean how do we define the mean it is nothing but the sum of the observations sum total of the observations divided by the 
total number of observations. So this is the sum total So this is the sum total divided by the total number of observations. Okay, so this is the sum total divided by the total number of observations. So over here, the first thing that I have is x1. So basically what, what uh, so, so I need to compute the sum of the observations, right? So it says that x1 occurs f1 number of times. So let's say x1 is 3 and it occurs 4 times. So what is the total amount of the value? So it is x1 into f1. That's x1 f1. Plus x2. F2. Plus X in F2. divided by plus okay. Right, so this is x1 f1 plus x2 f2 dot 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 plus xn fn. Right, so this is something which is there. Whole divided by f1 plus f2 plus fn. So over here, So we have x fi divided by summation of fi into x1. Plus f2 divided by summation of fi. So that is summation of all the fi plus x2 dot x2 right so like this you go on doing the sum products right so like this when i finally end up i'll get something like this it says fn divided by summation f i to x so now, can you tell me what is this F1 by summation Fi or this F2 divided by summation Fi? What is this called? 
or how can we interpret this? So we have seen is the relative frequency of, of x12 occur or the relative frequency of x22 occur. We have seen that, right? So the question that comes out over here is that why is this thing? So how do I interpret this thing? What is this? What is F1 by summation error? What is the relative frequency? How can we interpret this relative frequency? Yes. Any thoughts? How is it that we do this? Yes, what is this part? So this F1 by summation Fi, right, this part is nothing but, if you think about it, F1 is the number of times X1 occurs. So it is the number of cases favorable to the occurrence of X1. And summation Fi is... Summation Fi is your total number of occurrences. So therefore, this is nothing but you can think about it is the observed probability of x to take the value x1. So this is the probability of uh, x take the value x1, right? So this is probability x equal to xi. So therefore, if you have a look into this, you will see that this x, this x bar is nothing but you can write it as summation i1 to n probability of xi to occur into the output. Right, where pi is nothing but the relative frequency over here. So this is what we call an expectation of this variable x. So the expectation of a variable x is, is your average value or the long run average of that variable x. And what is this x called? Right. So this x has a very typical name over here. This x or x which has you know multiple outcomes, variable with multiple outcomes and probability associated with each outcome is called a random variable. It's called a random variable. Right, so this is precisely what we call a random variable. Right, so this expected loss, and so therefore, you know, this loss that we are computing the expectation of or the expected value of this loss series, or as we call 
the you know so of the loss series is called is nothing but your average loss right now any deviation from this average or any variation from this average is your unexpected loss so your unexpected loss would be something similar to this so it is variance of x So I can say that it is 1 by n summation xi minus x bar whole square. Right? So variance of x is a series. So this variance shows the dispersion of all the xi's from the central value right so the overall dispersion from the central value the mean value is nothing but your unexpected losses right so i can write this as this series as variance of x is nothing but the expectations of because you're averaging it over n so it's nothing but looking into the average dispersion of the average variation. So expectations of x from expectations of or the average digressions of the x from the mean squared. Right? So this is precisely how your unexpected loss, so this is what precisely your unexpected loss is. So your unexpected loss is nothing but the variation from the expected losses. Now obviously just computing a simple variance would not give me my unexpected loss. The unexpected loss is captured to something called the RWA or the risk weighted assets right so the unexpected loss is the rwa so basically what happens is that you know so basically your expected loss is the representative loss or that the overall portfolio losses on the other hand your unexpected loss is the loss which is occurring over and above the expected loss right and it is this loss which is creating the uh, so this unexpected loss is the one which is the digression from the expected loss it cannot be expected you cannot be predicted right it, it, it it's a kind of a loss which has a huge magnitude but a very low probability of occurring and all the way when we are keeping aside the capital keeping aside capital we are doing it to ensure that, that when this unexpected loss occurs we are well prevented. And one such case of an unexpected, of such an unexpected loss was the global financial crisis, right? So, my friends, from here I would be landing up, I would be, be talking about the next part, which is your global financial crisis. And how is it that it impacted this entire regulatory space, the entire banking space? Because every time, you know, the US ends up in a mess, right? It's the financial industry, the, the, uh, the stock markets or the asset industry or some other things has to has got a role to play in it. It was uh, for the second time, I think, that the banks had a role, major role to play in bringing about a crash in the banking system, right? So the next part that we talk about is we talk about the global financial crisis as a case of a study of uh, unexpected loss and from there we will map it back to our understanding of uh, you know our understanding of the regulations so this is something that we are going to talk about okay fine okay so which ones we do explain clarify the uh, formula for uh, the unexpected loss 
Okay, so first of all, Omesh, this is not the actual formula for unexpected loss, right? So this is the formula, or this is the concept of this is what a variance is about, right? So the variance. So what is a variance? A variance is a variation from the central value, right? So if you have a mean, so if you have a mean. Right, so the mean is a representative value for the set of observations, but the observations are not equal to mean. I mean, all the observations are not equal to the mean, right? So, there is a variation that we have, right? So, if we have that variation, the question that comes out to us is that. So now, now think about it like this, right? So the X bar captures the expected loss, right? So what is the unexpected loss? Unexpected loss is nothing but the variation from the expected loss, right? So the variance that I would have will capture the unexpected loss, but I cannot just compute a simple variance, right? Because I need to get it at an account level. So, and you cannot compute the unexpected loss at an account level. So, the unexpected loss is a totally separate formula, right? And this unexpected loss is captured by the risk weighted assets, right? So, the formula for unexpected loss would be equal to the RW, right? And then, based on that, you just do the Basel, uh, you put the Basel multiple and you get your total amount of capital which is required. So, so this is just to say that unexpected loss is nothing but it's a variance or a variation from the expected loss series. That's it.